and Mordecai, this is my favorite part, he got Haman's old job, the number two guy in the whole kingdom. Not bad. And Esther, what a gal. She showed more courage than 10 kings and saved her people. Now, she wasn't born for greatness. She didn't go to school for it. She just learned that sometimes God has plans so big only he can see them. All she had to do was believe. Yup, she was just a regular kid. Just like you. tell the story of Esther is that we were getting more and more letters saying, hey, how about a girl? A lot of guys going on here, you know, can't you give my daughter a, a really good vegetable role model? Originally, um, we wanted to do a, a story with a female heroine from the Bible. And so, um, you know, Esther and Ruth were, you know, jump, jump to the front of the pack. And um, I started researching both of those stories and landed on Esther just because it just was such a great story about courage. The whole flow of the story was just very cinematic. I mean, it just had a, you know, a, a great storyline and a great ending. I kind of landed on the idea of, you know, telling it as a uh, sort of a prohibition era type of story, sort of a Godfather-esque kind of thing. And even some of the, some of the scenery, like, uh, you know, when you go into the king's uh, chamber, you know, you look behind him and you see the uh, the horizontal blinds, you know, kind of arranged in the same way that the Godfather's blinds were, you know, in, in, in the original Godfather movie. Um, but just sort of getting that um, gangster feel to the film um, and, and, and just having fun with that. With Esther, we really were going for a cinematic feel. We were trying to make kind of a mini feature film. Esther was a big step for us because we knew we eventually wanted to get into movies. And to do a movie, we wanted to produce a, a more legitimate story a deeper, broader story, 
and see if we could pull it off. The character development, you know, was a, a little bit richer than we had done before. Uh, the sets were um, a little bit more elaborate, the music was more elaborate, and so we wanted to take a, a step toward making a film. We wanted to see how can we push our camera work, how can we push our lighting, you know, to, to, to have the confidence to go into Jonah and know that we can pull that off. Esther was a challenge in regards to we wanted to go a little bit more on the serious side, a little more dramatic, and uh, we wanted to introduce a new character. It was fun because we worked with a character that we tried to develop a little bit more reality into her hair, even though it was a challenge technically, and to develop a little bit different facial features for her character. And we went round and round in what we could do in regards to the kind of vegetable that we should use and, and, and how, uh, how we should change her movements. And she was a real challenge in a lot of ways. When we were uh, um, designing Esther, we went from uh, kind of a, just a, a plain girl to like this beautiful Hollywood starlet. We, we can't use that. Who's going to relate to that? You know, we want someone that everybody can relate to. And my daughter, uh, Sarah pose for me at home. I just noticed how the hair would always fall on her face. I said, that's very interesting. So I started to draw this and I said, honey, just sit right there. I want to draw you because I'm designing Esther. So she sat there. She's moving her hair back and forth. So I'm sketching, sketching, sketching. Said, okay, Dad, let me see. So I finally show it to her. She goes, that doesn't look like me. That's a vegetable. But uh, it had all those elements of her in there. And uh, taking those, those little elements from life, from a real child, and bringing them into the story just makes it so much more believable. But it was a nightmare on the animators because, it, you know, are you sure you want to have that hair go over her high? And the lighting kept having shadows over the face that we didn't want. We wanted her to look special. We wanted her to look charming. We didn't want to just take another pickle and put eyelashes on it. And we wanted her to look attractive as much as we could and uh, be engaging for little girls. So it was a headache, it was a nightmare, but uh, it looked beautiful when it was all done. For there is nothing we can face when God is at our side. As I look back, um, it's kind of interesting thematically to look at what we chose to address in conjunction with what we were going through at the time. Uh, for instance, you know, we chose We're Scout and I'm Scared for the first video, which I think is very appropriate <laughs> as we're starting out on this big adventure, terrified. Um, and then, you know, a couple videos later is the little guys can do big things too. And I know as we had, had a few videos out there after a while and Phil's dream kept getting bigger about how he wanted to help the world and, and impact culture, I'm sure he felt a little small in proportion, and then out comes that song. And Esther, um, The Battle Is Not Ours, that song, is really, even still to this day, very, very meaningful. The words of, the battle is not ours, we look to God above, for he will guide us safely through and guard us with his love. I will not be afraid, I will not run and hide, for there's nothing I can't face when God is at my side. And <clears throat> that was a time, I believe, in Big Ideas history where we had grown. We were a different kind of company than when we started and we were three guys in an office. I think that came out of how he was feeling at the time, and it was just a very, I think he wrote it for himself, and then the rest of the world, we got to benefit a little by it. No, there is nothing I can face when God is at my side. The Battle Is Not Ours was a very powerful song for me. To, to work with. It had a, a very haunting melody and I wanted to pull as much out of that song as I could. It was, it was a fun challenge and um, a very powerful song to be able to work with. And it really affected me. I mean, just the lesson of that story, um, researching it, um, you know, and, and you know, turning it into a VeggieTales story, um, you know, it really impacted my life. It's just because it's such a powerful, powerful story. This Christmas, we are in for a treat tonight. A musical spectacular. Thank you, sir, for coming, for I think I have a leak. Show me where the trouble is. I'd like to take a peek. With a very special message. I teach all of London to love. Takes a wild detour. Hang on! Ah! And ends up right where it belongs. The Star of Christmas. A VeggieTales Christmas special on video and DVD in stores everywhere. I'm so blue cuckoo, blue cuckoo, blue cuckoo, 
She's so blue, she don't know what to do. With a lovely tree house and her butlers too, what do you think <laughs> makes this blueberry blue? You have a lot to be thankful for. A sign from above gives her answers enough. What does it mean? She'll be happy, she thinks, if she just has more stuff. I'm not leaving until I have everything I need to be happy. Shall we shop? But as piles and piles of stuff fill her cart, the things that she gets still don't fill up her heart. There are whole aisles we haven't even seen yet. Then the real answer comes from two hearts that are true. If her heart was more thankful, she wouldn't be blue. I want what that little boy with the ball has and what the little girl with the piece of pie has. Veggie Tales Madam Blueberry on video and DVD. Sunday morning values, Saturday morning fun. From the studios of Big Idea. As long as this king's in his bath, everything's ducky. Because I love my duck. He has everything a king could want. Now, now, now I'm happy. Until he spies what someone else has got. It's beautiful. I must have it, I must get it, you must go and get it for me. If you want me to be happy, then you'll show me you adore me. How far will he go to have it all? Put Thomas at the front of the battle. But he'll be creamed. And what will happen when he learns he's gone too far? What do I do? What do I do? Veggie Tales, King George and the Ducky on video and DVD. Including the classic silly song, Endangered Love. Barbara Manatee. You are the one for me. One for me, one for me. From the studios of Big Idea.